Hello everyone, Prime here, and I hope that you're having a great day. Today we're going to be going over the saddest backstories in Egyptian mythology. So, be sure to tell me what you think is the saddest backstory, or just your list in order of the gods that we cover, from Smite, who you think has the saddest story as far as Egyptian mythology is concerned. And if there's um, a specific mythology you'd like me to cover next, go ahead and first of all check which ones that I have already covered, being Roman, Japanese, and Greek mythology so far, as well as Chinese, so be sure to check those out if you're interested in that. And with all of that said, let's begin. Starting us off is Ra. He was tricked by Isis into revealing his true name to her. See, in Egyptian mythology, it's very important that a deity could know your true name, and most deities did not actually give anyone that they knew their real names, because to know someone's real name, as far as, as long as they were a deity, was to have true power over them. And this was so important to Isis because it allowed her to establish the throne for her son Horus. Whilst Ra was taking in some scenery and all of the things that he created, took a part of Ra and transformed that essence of Ra into a deadly snake that poisoned Ra. Ra at the time was very terrified and called for the aid of all of the gods who quickly assembled before him. They all looked very sad, except for Isis. Isis was just pretending to be sad, and after a bit of back and forth between the two deities, in private, Isis eventually does get Ra to tell her his real name. It did take a bit of time, Ra was flouting his pride a bit, but eventually Isis won in the end. Now, another part of this that makes Ra a decent contender to be the god of the saddest backstory in Smite is the fact that when he was born, he was soon separated from his mother. This mother may have been Hathor, the partner of the Divine Creator, or it may have been Neith, the All Mother. And Ra was lost in the Nun, separated from his mother, and he cried his eyes out. My gods, you could probably never consider a more pathetic thing in the world. But yes, this happened, and it was really tragic for Ra. No need to see Ra in any worse lies than you already may or may not, but there you go. The third sad point for Ra is linked to Geb's story, so let's just jump right into Geb. This wasn't necessarily Ra's pad point, it might just be for Shu, who was a god of the air, or... But whether Shu or Ra was the parent of Geb doesn't really matter, because it was by Ra's authority, ultimately, that Geb and his wife Nut were separated, and because of this, Geb longed for his wife so much that his soldier reclined towards the sky. And it's also quite depressing because Ra or Shu, technically it was Shu, physically blocks the two of them and prevents them from being each other. So he steps on Geb's body, the earth, whilst rising Nut into the air. And the thing that might be really sad about this, and super ultra depressing, is that Shu slash Ra may have really, really desired Nut, hence why the couple were separated. But the main and usually more accepted reason as to why they were separated was that Ra simply just couldn't get any creation or business done. Now, thanks to Foth playing a bit of a gambling game, he was able to get the couple a few nights together, and they did have children during this time. But after this time, Geb began to sprout life, such as you, me, plants, birds, and all other animals across the earth. So, if you ever get trapped in a natural disaster, there's a recent hurricane or strong winds developing around the UK right now, and of course there have been several earthquakes, forest fires, things of that nature, if you get trapped in anything like that, Geb's probably smiling and very happy because he's having his revenge on you. Because every day that you live and breathe on this earth, he cannot be with his wife. So, yes, Geb probably doesn't like you. To be fair though, Geb does let out a few of his frustrations on Shu slash Ra when he raids the city of Ra, and not only does he take over the city and establish himself as a new king, but he also gives his mother, Tefnut, or Ra slash Shu's wife, which is very disgusting, and I use the R word, I'm not sure if that's okay. I think it's okay, and we're going to continue to use that word a lot, because Egyptian mythology, as I forgot to give this slight disclaimer at the start of the video, Egyptian mythology is very much disgusting. So, let me know in the comment section below if that does anything to Ra's character for you. In fact, tell me, any of these stories, do they affect your opinions of these gods, now that you know these extra facets of information about them? Be interested to know what you think of these gods after this video. But next up, very long cluster of stories, so hopefully you've got some popcorn and a drink ready, because next up we have Nemesis. 
and her family, i.e. one of the daughters of Geb and Nut. Nemesis wanted her husband, Set, to pay more attention to her by transforming into Isis, because you see, Nemesis and Set represented barren aspects of life. Set was a god of the desert and was considered to be infertile or just not very interested in women. He was considered to be a homosexual. Nemesis was considered to be infertile and capable of having sex and was represented or heavily associated with vultures, who the Egyptians believed were a female-only race and had a very special way of being conceived and coming into the world, and they did not believe that there were male vultures existing in the world, which is why Nemesis is said to be infertile. However, Despite Nemesis' advances as Isis, Set ignored his wife and continued to be a happy homosexual. But this may not have had the desired effect that Set wanted, because instead of Nemesis getting the attention from Set, she instead got attention from Osiris, and the two of them kind of got it on, as it were. And it's funny because Osiris messed up and a flower grew in the deserts controlled by Set, and that's how Set found out about the relationship between his wife and Osiris. Isis was also none too pleased about this arrangement, Isis being the wife of Osiris. But whilst Isis did eventually give Osiris for his, you know, fun chasing, Set was none too forgiving. Not only did Nemesis have to flee for her life for fear of dying from Set's wrath, Osiris was also under danger from Set, and Set, you have to consider, is a very, very powerful, or rather was a very, very powerful Egyptian deity. He was one of the key factors in keeping the Apep, the dangerous serpent spawned by Nif Spit, at bay every night as Ra's great solar barge travelled around the earth. So you can imagine Set being this very powerful chap could easily overpower and perhaps slay Osiris. And not only did he he slay Osiris, but he has slayed Osiris multiple times, because Egyptian gods, whilst A, they're not really made up of flesh and uh, that kind of mushy stuff, they're actually made up of gold and silver and natural metals, they also couldn't just be killed once, and they're very difficult to kill for the most part. Osiris had many murder attempts by the hand of Set at his life, but eventually did perish to Set. He was killed once by Set. Well, first off, Seth tried to poison Osiris, didn't work. Then he eventually did succeed in killing him by drowning him in the River Nile. But Isis wasn't pleased about this, so Isis said, Come on, I'll revive your Osiris, and Osiris came back to life. Set was an undeclaimed of Isis, and then chopped up Osiris, and even mutilated the poor guy, then scattered all of these pieces of Osiris' body across the desert, and thought that was that. Isis travelled across the desert in defiance of Set, her brother, and decided to collect all of the pieces of Osiris. Meanwhile, Nemesis gave birth to Anubis and had to abandon him in some reeds. She didn't necessarily want to leave her son in some reeds, but there are two perhaps explanations as to why she left her son. The first, of course, despite what I just said about her not wanting to leave the son, Anubis was an ugly jackal monster, and she was like, no, I'm not raising this. So she just left it in the reeds. The second reason was simply that she was so afraid for her life that she just couldn't imagine taking care of a child at this time, so she just abandoned it. Luckily for Anubis though, he was raised or protected by Isis. The thing is about this though that's sad for Anubis was that he was still on the run from the powerhouse that is set. During the journey, and uh, this is a very uh, 18x rated part of the video, so if you uh, don't like that kind of thing, I suggest skipping about a minute or two of the story, but Isis found a very specific part of Osiris, the last part that she found actually, and it was a part that would have been very special to a husband and a wife shall we say. And there are two ways in which Horus was born, even though Osiris was dead. Either A, the correct parts of Osiris' essence were still alive, and Isis put a very specific male part inside of her body and held it there, concealed, for long enough for the creation of Horus to take place, but she was pregnant for ten months. 
Ouch. I, I can't imagine that. Only a godly being could uh, be capable of such things. But the reason why Egyptian mythology probably maintains its reputation as being not very pleasant is that the second way that she did this was she simply just took Osiris's uh, thingy and um, uh, did something very X-rated with, uh, shall we say, the private parts of the couple. Osiris's DNA, soon enough, was used to then produce Horus. So, yes, Egyptian mythology is probably the nastiest of all of the mythologies in Smite. But Isis was on the run during this time because, of course, she was vulnerable, being pregnant, of course. She hid her son Horus after he was born in the Chemis marshes, away from Set's grasp and control. But whilst she was raising Horus, she had to do some pretty questionable things, such as she disguised herself as an old woman and was forced to beg for food just to stay alive, even though she was a god. But, luckily, for the family, except for Seth, of course, Horus vows to avenge his father. Of course, Horus's life was never easy growing up, and even though Isis did love him dearly, Set's grasp eventually did clamp hold of Horus. You remember when I said Set was a homosexual? Well, you're about to know where I'm going with that. Horus was a male, Set was a male, Set attracted to this young child, this being Egyptian mythology, it happened. Yes, stop shaking your heads in disbelief. Pregnancy in Egyptian mythology is a bit more unique than how it necessarily works for us. You see, males can also become pregnant with children in Egyptian mythology. And so, to prevent himself from becoming pregnant, Isis advised Horus to catch the liquid DNA of Set, shall we say, in his hand before it reached his body. Then, he discarded this DNA after leaving Set's um, very unique and perhaps creepy care, and then returned to his mother Isis. Now, in a similar fashion to how Atom and Hathor created the universe, Isis helped Horus to produce some DNA of his own, and then Isis spread this DNA across the gardens of Set. When Set eventually sat down to have a meal, he became impregnated and gave birth to an Ibis, or, or, he gave birth to Foth. Now, this doesn't necessarily make the greatest amount of sense in the world, because Foth was part of the reason that Geb and Nut were even capable of even coming together as man and wife to then have Set and his brothers and sisters, but just go with it. Now, okay, later on in the timeline, because Isis was a very powerful god, she not only used special magical words to keep Set at bay and preventing Set from just killing them all, she also transformed into a bird, not just any old bird, but I can't remember if the bird, so let's just pretend it was any old bird, along with her sister Nemesis to protect the body of Osiris. And she did battle with Set and not just did battle with the god. She defeated this almighty powerful god, but could not bring herself to kill him, purely for the fact that they were brother and sister, and Set reminded her of this. Knowing that Isis was probably one of the most loving beings in the entirety of Egyptian mythology, and because pretty much everyone in Egyptian mythology is pretty much a dick with the exception of Isis and a few others, Horus punished his mother, and not just in any old-fashioned way. She cut off Isis' head after everything Isis did for him. He just, just, just gone. No more Isis' head. But being a deity, and remember what I said, Egyptian gods are very difficult to kill, Isis got a replacement head, but it was a cow head. So you can see how that was very much a downgrade from her previous more human-looking head. Sad times for us. But before you get going around thinking that Horus was a complete dick with, uh, you know, he was punished a bit before by Set, we should remember that Isis did cut off the hands of Horus. I don't know why she did this. I don't know if it was some sort of punishment, a trial, a test, or if Isis was being a dick. But Sobek did actually manage to recover the hands of Horus, and in the process he also invented the fishing net. 
Serbek was a bit of a dick, and not many sad things happened to Serbek, so there's no point mentioning him on this list. He also had one of his eyes slit by Set during a battle where the two of them were both hippopotami over the throne of Egypt. And of course, this probably hurt a lot for Horus, but Isis did eventually recover this eye of Horus. And bad times were also present for Set. When Set finally did get his comeuppance, not only was he to carry the lifeless corpse of Osiris to its final place of resting, but he also had his best friend that had been staying with him for his entire life removed. And if you do not know what I mean by best friend at this point, then A, you have not understood this video, or B, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. Should age restrict it, but I'm not going to, but you know. Yeah. So those were the pretty messed up and really sad and tragic backstories from Egyptian mythology. Yes, that, that facial expression you've got going on there is pretty correct. You should be disgusted. Uh, if we had to try and rank these in order of least sad to most sad, I suppose Anubis for me, because, okay, he was under threat of death and he had a really crappy birth. But other than that, his life was pretty sweet. He ruled over the dead for a long time until Osiris kind of kicked him out of his place. And, of course, he got to be a dog. So, you know, nothing was bad for Anubis. Then, of course, I'm going to go with Ra, because even though he cried his eyes out when he was a child, he was a child at this point, is what you expect children to do. And even though he didn't get his hands on his daughter like Zeus did, and even though Isis found out his real name, he ruled over the kingdom of Egypt for a very, very long time. He was one of the most powerful gods in Egyptian mythology, and he was highly respected and feared. Ra probably had one of the best lives in Egyptian mythology out of all the gods. So, yeah. Then, this is the part that gets very tricky. If we're going by just the gods that are left in Smite, that would be Geb, Osiris, and Isis, and all of them have very, very bad deals. Being trapped under the heels of your father as you watch your wife just above you, unable to touch or do anything with her, must have been the worst experience anyone could have ever faced, except for the fact that, well, Osiris was tricked into sleeping with his sister, then had his other sister and brother very mad at him, had several attempts at his life that he survived, then he was resurrected only to be killed in the most painful way imaginable, and then he remained dead, but somehow perhaps conscious for long enough for himself to be resurrected as a mummy so that he could leave his corpse. My question is, was he conscious within the corpse and unable to move? Because that sounds awful for all of those years until Horus liberated Egypt from the fear control of Set. Or at least, in some instances of the story, Set controls half of Egypt, Horus controls another half of Egypt. So there you go, they reached a, an understanding. But still, very bad deal for Osiris. And then we have Isis, who Isis, hands down, in my opinion, has the worst deal, I think. Actually, but then Geb's is pretty... I can't decide between Geb and Isis, but let's see. Betrayed by your family, essentially, who you were loyal to. You were good to Horus, and he cuts off your head. Good to Horus, and he's still, uh, according to Egyptian tradition... I didn't mention this, but Horus still, um, shall we say, has his way with his mother. Uh... There was a very specific reason for this, but this still happens. And she did everything for Horus, everything to assure that Horus would become the king of Egypt. So, not only that, but her husband, by mistake, and it truly was a mistake, it's not just one of those times where you're watching a weird, very terrible soap, where, you know, they say it's a mistake and it really wasn't a mistake, and they're just stupid people, but soap, so you expect them to be stupid people. Osiris was genuinely tricked by his sister into sleeping with her. So, yeah. And then he took all of the punishment, pretty much. Isis still probably got the worst deal there, because she lost having the true experiences that she would have experienced with her husband. She lost out on so much time with her husband. Um, she really got the raw end of the stick. 
and she had to do so much for her son just to make sure that he remained alive and well. But then you have Geb being trapped under the foot of Shu, again unable to be with Nut, but Nut staring down, and his soldier, his great soldier just wants to be with his wife, but it can't, and it rises towards her, but, but it, it can't get there, and it's just so tragic, and ugh. I suppose my point is, if you're still here, and you're not completely disgusted by everything that I've explained about Egyptian mythology, tell me, who had the worst deal here? Who really deserves the title of saddest backstory in Egyptian mythology. Tell me in the comment section below. I may or may not leave a poll in this video, that sounds like a good idea, but we shall see. But still tell me in the comment section below and tell me why, because, well, I may have missed something. If I've missed something, go ahead and tell me. And if you think another god from Egyptian mythology is deserving of the title, by all means, let me know. That will be it for the video. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't enjoy for whatever reason, well, you can still leave a like. The button's there for a good reason. I, I don't see why not. And, of course, if you're new to the channel and want to see more content just like this, as if I do say so myself, it's fairly unique, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to see some other saddest backstories of Spite, I've already, as I said, I've covered Greek. I've covered Celtic, actually. I've also covered Chinese. And I've covered Japanese and Roman. And I've now, of course, covered Egyptian. Up next will probably be the saddest backstories in Norse mythology. And if you thought this video was long, well, just wait until we get to that one. But until the next video, thank you very, very, very much for watching. I've been Prime, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.